So um, we're talking about notes for five writing equations from tables and graphs. We looked at this little top part and we talked about that linear equations can be written from a table of values that represent a linear relationship. We already talked about these when we did our um, task cards. Just gonna kinda help you understand what's going on and re-hit that for you. Okay, so the first step right here says determine the constant rate of change. Okay, determining the constant rate of change <clears throat> is finding this change from here that we've been finding. Okay, so right here they already clearly wrote it for you, but I'm just going to go over it. So negative 2 to 4 is 6, 4 to 10 is 6, six 10 to 16 is 6. So that's the change in y. And then your change in x is this plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. Okay, so your constant rate of change is your change in y over your change in x. Okay, so we got that as 6 over 2, which simplifies to 3. Okay, so we're going to go back and review for just a second. I'm going to put up the screen go back to the problem. So we clearly found the rate of change here, and we said 6 over 2 is 3. So now we're going to determine the y-intercept, okay? It tells us our y-intercept when our x-point is zero, and we talked about that the other day. So right here, our x-point is zero, so our y-intercept is four. So we're gonna say our b is four, and we define this as our m equals three. So now we're going to determine the y-intercept, and then we're going to write the equation. So our equation would be y equals 3x, because that's our m, plus 4. So we're going to go down to the bottom of the page. We're going to skip example 2 for just a minute, and we're going to do exercise 1. So our rate of change here is, we're going to find that first. You find the rate of change. So the rate of change from negative 11 to 9 is positive 20. 9 to 29 is positive 20, plus 20. 29 to 49 is plus 20. <clears throat> Our change from negative 5 to 0 is plus 5. 0 to 5 is plus 5. And then 5 to 10 is plus 5. So, okay. So we're going to have our change in y, which is 20, over our change in x, which is 5. And 20 over 5 simplifies to 4, which is our M piece, okay? Our Y piece, our B, Y intercept, is going to be right here, and it's defined by this. So our X, when X is 0, our Y is 9. So our B is going to equal 9. So if I'm going to write this equation, I'm going to say Y equals 4X plus 9. Okay, guys, so y'all are going to pick back up with me because we're going to talk about this next one real quick, okay? So number two, example two, if we found the change, just to make sure you're correct, okay, the change here is minus six because it's going down. So you're subtracting six, subtracting six. You're adding two over here, adding two, adding two, okay? So your change in y is minus 6 or negative 6. Your change in x is 2, and that simplifies to negative 3. Okay, so that is your m. Now our change, our y-intercept, we have the 0 point. So at 0 on the x-axis, our y Intercept is negative 7, so our B equals negative 7. So if I fill that into a graph, okay, y'all should have gotten Y equals negative 3X minus 7. Okay, you have to take, make sure you take both of those signs with it, Alex. So, okay. So now we're going to do another example. We're going to go back to the example problems, okay? So we talked about this. I think it was one or two that we talked about. So I'm going to go back through this, and we're going to define each thing here. So we're still looking to write an equation. It still asks us to write an equation here, okay? So my equation is going to be y equals mx 
plus or minus b. So first things first, when we had a coordinate grid, I told you find the y-intercept first. So I'm going to put a dot on where it crosses the y-axis. So if I look right here, this crosses the y-axis at 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4. So my b is what, guys? Negative Perfect, negative 4, okay? So then next, we go through and find the point where it has to cross through the crosshairs. If it doesn't cross through the crosshairs, it's not a point, okay? So if you look, I'm going to blow this up real big. It crosses through the crosshairs right there, right there, right? Okay? So we're going to do our rise over our run. Do you remember rise over run? We talked about that for, before. So my M is going to be rise over run, okay? So my rise is going to be 1, 2, and I'm going to run 1. So it's 2 over 1. Now, when I write this into my equation, I don't need to have 2 over 1, but if it's a fraction, I would keep the fraction, okay? But if it's 2 over 1, it's just a whole number. I'm going to drop that 1 off, okay? So my equation for this line would be y equals what? Go ahead, tell me. 2x plus 2x minus 4. Perfect. Yeah, 2x minus 4. Good job. Okay, so 2 is the slope. Negative 4 is my y-intercept. Okay, so the example that we have down here, or the exercise that we have down here is this one right here. So we're going to do that. We're going to write this equation. This is how I want my equation. Now, if it goes through 0, 0, that means it's proportional. We know that, right? Okay, if it goes through 0, 0, we don't have to put plus 0. Okay, that's like nothing. We don't need to add that, so don't add that on there, okay? You're not going to have an answer choice that's 3x plus 0, okay? It's just going to be 3x, okay? So let's define our points here. This is where it crosses the y-axis right there. Okay, the next point that I see, I see right here and right here. Are you all good with those points? Okay, so my B is positive 1 because that's where it crosses our axis. So always define your y-axis first on this one. You don't necessarily have to do that with the, the table, but it's easier to define your y-axis and then start from there here, okay? So my rise over my run okay, would be rise 1, 2, 3, and run 1. So it would be 3 over 1, which just simplifies to what? 3. Perfect, okay, 3. So now, if I were to write my equation, I would say, somebody give it to me. 3. Y y equals three. Plus one. Perfect, y equals 3x plus 1, okay? So I took each piece, I put it into the formula, the slope intercept form, okay, and then solved my equation and I'm done. It's not that bad, right? Okay, so this is from a coordinate grid or a graph. The other is from a table. So if you look on the back side, I don't have the homework page on here, but if you look on the back side, um, it gives you questions, it gives you four tables and four graphs. So how we're going to work that, I'm going to come around and I'm going to check, like when you're done with number one, come around and I'm going to check it. Okay? If I think you need redirection to find out, to figure it out again, but I want you to do them in order. So please do them one, two, three, four. So let me check each one so I can kind of grade your homework as you're going. Does that make sense? Okay. We're going to write this equation at the bottom of your paper. So we wrote this. We wrote this on our paper yesterday. We're going to rewrite it today. So this little thing right here, we're going to circle this in. It means so many things that are important to us right now. It means the slope, which we're going to talk about at the end of the paper. It means change in y over change in x. It also means rate of change. Okay, it means unit rate. It means several more things. It has several more representations, but that's what we're going to talk about today. And then our last thing is this b, and the sign in front of it goes with it. And b is your y-intercept. We defined the y-intercept as where x is 0 your y is 
whatever, and that's going to be your right intercept. So it's where your line crosses. The y axis. Okay. So we redefine that, and you can put that on your paper wherever, but I think the bottom would probably be the best spot. Okay. So when you catch up with this,